those verses on those pages, it's God's voice. So a lot of people say, God's never spoken to me. Well, if you read the Bible, that's God's voice. He's speaking to you. What was going on is I was on that plane reading the Bible for six hours straight and the word just started manifesting in my life. And through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, I landed and I felt peace for the first time in my life. I was the youngest of three brothers. Now they're all skinheads and punks during that time. Now. My brothers weren't into drugs and alcohol, but a lot of their friends were, because that's part of the whole skinhead and punk movement. So me being a younger brother, kind of seeing the way things are happening, you know, naturally, I just always had this uh, curiosity in me to see what was on the other side. So I was naturally attracted to the drugs, the porn, the alcohol, the smoking and stuff like that. So I wanted to check it out and see uh, what it held for me. Here I am at the hotel room, nine days of cocaine, Xanax, and alcohol, and I OD. And this is actually the, for the third time in my life. And the skateboard team came. They were, they were actually looking for me at the bar to see where I was at. They came to my room, they found me basically laid out dead, uh, OD'd. And they called my parents and they said, we don't think Ryan's gonna make it out of here alive. My parents, they prayed. By God's grace, I came out of it the next day. And that's when I knew that I had to change basically my whole life. So at that point, I just said a prayer. I said, God, if you're real, prove that you're real. And if you're real, I'll follow you. I don't know what that looks like, but I'll follow you. And I just confessed my sins. I just said, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Prove that you're real. I'll give my life to you and fill me with the Holy Spirit. Well, nothing supernatural or anything happened at that point that I knew, because I was thinking like I would see something, but nothing happened. But legitly, something did supernaturally happen in my life. Um, I got forgiven of my sins. God implanted his Holy Spirit in me. And at that time, that's when um, I decided, I guess it was a prompting of the Holy Spirit that I needed to confess uh, to people around me. It talks about that in James, you know, confess your sins. So I went down to the skate team and I said, I have a drug problem and I have an alcohol problem. And it was the hardest thing to actually confess it out. I talk about it in my book, I was just like stuck in my throat. But I remember when I said it, it was like freedom came. Every time I confessed, freedom came. It's like this weight came off of me. It was the weirdest thing. And at that point, that's when I realized, um, you know, I had to go deeper. So I went back to my hotel and I was looking for a Bible in the hotel room. Cause there's these Bibles everywhere you go in the hotel room. They're called Holy Bibles. And they have like little Gideon logos on them. And I opened the drawer and there was a blue Gideon Bible that said Holy Bible on it. Opened it up, started reading it. And nothing actually happened at that point. I was like, okay, I read the Bible. And like now what's next? So went to bed, woke up the next morning and um, I decided to steal the Bible from the hotel. I had a plane ride for six hours. I kept reading it. I remember just reading the living word of God because those verses, there's like, I don't know, 34 to 36,000 verses, uh, depending what translation you read, but those verses on those pages, it's God's voice. So a lot of people say, God's never spoken to me. Well, if you read the Bible, that's God's voice. He's speaking to you. What was going on is I was on that plane, reading the Bible for six hours straight, and the Word just started manifesting in my life. And through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, I landed and I felt peace for the first time in my life. And that's what it, that's what it says in the Bible is that, you know, it says that John the Baptist says, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And the, the operation of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is the come alongside, it's the paracletus. And what he does is he comes alongside you and he prompts you and he starts transforming you and renewing your mind and your heart. And, and just changing your whole thought process. So when I landed in Los Angeles, I felt peace and there was a, a instantaneously change in my life from within. And I went home, went to bed, woke up the next morning and I heard the song singing through my head when I woke up and it said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I knew that that was God's voice speaking to me. And the Psalm says, uh, the word of God never comes back void. That song that was singing through my head was a song when I was in uh, first grade, it was like a Sunday school song we used to sing. And now, because it was already embedded in me, the Holy Spirit was able to pull it back and bring it to remembrance. And that's what it talks about in Acts. It says, don't worry what to say. The Holy Spirit will draw and bring up what needs to be said at that time. And uh, God was speaking to me and he revealed that he was the Messiah. And I knew he was real from that point. And I knew I was gonna follow him. I didn't know what it looked like, but I surrendered my life and that's the true way to worship Christ is to bow our will and it's the heart posture of a heart. And I just said, I'm gonna follow you. And that's basically what I've been doing ever since. I went to Israel to go to the Holy Land to go tour to see where Jesus went, to see what the scripture says and to see where it actually happened. 
And I was in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's where Jesus was the night before he went to get crucified. And um, I was there by myself and I was sitting there in the garden and I just went there and instead of prayer, I said, God, I was ready to go back actually to the skate industry and, and manage the skate team again. And I said, God, if you want me to do, tell my story and just follow you, like do ministry, I guess. I didn't even know what ministry looked like for myself at that time. But I said, if you want me to follow you into that world and tell my story, and you have to have someone contact me that's not in my inner circle, you know? My dad would be like, share your story. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that just because I'm your son or I'm not gonna jump on stage and, and be in the church just because I'm your son. It has to be something authentic and real from, from the king has to call me. Jesus, so I prayed and God basically, um, I prayed, I said, God, have someone contact me. That's not my inner circle. The next day in Israel, someone called me, me, a pastor from Las Vegas, and he said, I heard you got saved and I want you to come to my church and tell your story. So basically what happened is, uh, I just said, oh my gosh, is this real? Like, I thought this was a joke, but it was a real thing. God, I prayed, God answered, and I went. It's kind of the John the Baptist story. He waited on God, God spoke, and he went. And uh, ever since then, I've been living the Great Commission, bringing the gospel to as many people as possible. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.